about 48 hours, Maria turned from this storm that we were sort of worried about to a bullseye straight through Puerto Rico, and that day everything changed. Irma and Maria happened, total disaster. Noel Zamat was a graduate. Uh, he was right in the middle of it, able to email him and say, uh, is there a possibility of a GoLab project in Puerto Rico? As a team representing MIT, we're basically here to provide to the island a set of recommendations on uh, implementation of um, energy microgrids on the island. One of our classmates, Jari, lives in Puerto Rico. I was talking to him about how things were down here. Because that, that road uh, was completely clogged, yeah, you know, yeah, completely clogged. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have to use machetes and a lot of stuff for getting out. We didn't have electricity for five months. I don't want to face the same situation next time a hurricane hits the island. What if we could take everything that MIT has to offer and bring it out here and try to help people think about how to rebuild their energy infrastructure basically from scratch because everything has been destroyed. It was like a combat zone. It's the only way to describe it. You had structures that were knocked over like they were made of aluminum foil. Uh, entire hills were just denuded. Uh, houses destroyed, roofs torn apart, people stranded, uh, unable to cross gorges and bridges. We're still actually on restoration. Um, we're months in, we still have almost 10% of the population without power. The biggest challenge is uh, addressing all of the needs and priorities of the Commonwealth simultaneously. As an MIT alum, I do think that having the GoLab team come and provide a, a third-party, neutral, unbiased perspective on what they see as opportunities and challenges here facing Puerto Rican good recovery, I think that's an enormous uh, asset to the recovery process. We have three different meetings with three different stakeholders. Energy Commission, with the uh, Office of the Energy, with the Energy Power Authority, so very different stakeholders, and I'm a little worried. The the systems here are so challenged uh, financially, socially, demographically. Hopefully, it's that perspective from from MIT, from the EMBA program, uh, that can help to to show the much greater level of common ground and potentially provide some insight, some path uh, that can make their work easier as they, as they rebuild a more resilient Puerto Rico. Part of what we're focused on is trying to determine how viable microgrids are. As you go through thinking through what were the big barriers to you implementing this project, that would be very helpful for us to under, understand as well. You know, the carport was totally destroyed. This was destroyed, but this is part of a 90 kilowatt system. Do you own the distribution between those buildings? So yeah. like, so you could power one building off another on, on mm -hmm. kind of, yes. you know, on copper that you own basically, right? So. Yeah. And total energy used right now. It's just over two gigawatts, it's, like 20, two, yeah, 2200. Right, right. So uh, it's two gigawatts. Yeah. So the capacity of the renewables is, is something like 10%, but it's not yeah. obviously utilized. When I look at GoLab, I think it's a, a perfect uh, finish to this incredible program because uh, it gives us opportunity to apply what you've learned uh, in a real world scenario and like you know about solving complex global problems. My name is Feliciano Rodriguez. I'm the pastor of the parish here in the neighborhoods of Borinquen and San Salvador in the southern part of Caguas. It was hit directly by uh, Hurricane Maria. We counted some hundred houses that were partially or totally lost. The electricity came back to some parts of the community, but we lost even the, the post, so we don't have any power over here. Same thing with cell, mm -hmm. uh, cell, uh, telephone service. We lost everything. In more than 70 years, I had never seen such a thing like this. Okay. The first two months after the hurricane, they were picking up things and sink from all over the place in order to refurbish all this. So, so they could uh, focus on that and not think on what happened.
¿Verdad? Estamos bien. <risa> sí, estamos bien. They say that at least we are alive. There are other people that have lost everything. And at least we are here. One of the reasons I picked the Scola project with Puerto Rico is having been from Syria, I wanted to do something that's impactful and learn about resiliency and how you build a system around that. And that was my attraction to the project. We've been working on this project since December. We have uh, researched a lot, we did some phone interviews, we read a lot about the situation, and I think it's really hard when you come in here and you just really look at the real things. What does it look like? The tail is what hits us. Yes, right. So the walls from, there were two walls over here, they were piled up on there. These four days have opened us to a much broader perspective on how how big the problem is or uh, how much more uh, complex this problem is. The other thing that we found was, you know, natural gas infrastructure on the island is poor. Um, and so uh, for cogeneration, you know, natural gas or, or propane are, are two really attractive fuels. The economics look great. I believe GoLab gave us a lot of value. And then gave us something useful, gave us ideas, uh, critique what we have been doing right, what we have been doing wrong, and to help us get to the next level. So it was extremely valuable. Uh, we presented our story. And what we learned from the commissioner was not only are the economics of significant interest to him, it is very politically sensitive. And so what we need to now do is really dig into the numbers and make sure that all of the numbers are very, very tight so that he can make a case literally next week to various energy commissions that ultimately will influence policy. So it is a very, very timely and very important thing for him because it directly impacts Puerto Rican citizens immediately. The opportunity to be part of uh an effort uh, to lay the groundwork for and, and provide a framework uh, for moving forward in ways that can productively help is enormously rewarding. These problems have technical, cultural, political, economic, macroeconomic, and in cases, global issues that affect them. The reality is that we need them. We need that brain power. We need the solutions that they're going to develop. The people of Puerto Rico need those solutions. This is not a joke. We wanted to take a very independent, really bipartisan, objective view of what's really happening on the ground. What are the availability of microgrids? What does the financing look like? What is the resiliency? What has taken place? What are people's experiences? How much pain are they suffering right now? What is the real sense of the system on the ground? Then begin to test them with stakeholders and begin to say, hey, if our assumptions are these and we've seen X, Y, and Z, would a solution that looks like this match some of the problems that you're seeing. And we really start to triangulate that and hopefully iterate to a really helpful solution for, for the territory of Puerto Rico.